Diffrag Reflection When X-rays hit a three-dimensional crystal lattice, they are diffracted. In certain directions, there are intensity minima, in others, intensity maxima. William Lawrence Bragg succeeded in 1912 to explain this phenomenon in the wave picture of light and to formulate the so-called Bragg condition. The experimental setup consists of an X-ray tube with a molybdenum anode, a sodium chloride or lithium fluoride crystal as the scattering body, and a Geiger-Müller counter tube, which is mounted rotatably around the scattering body as the X-ray detector. The X-ray tube is operated at 35 kV acceleration voltage and 1 mA tube current. In the X-ray tube, free electrons are generated at the cathode. The electrons are accelerated and hit the inclined molybdenum anode. By decelerating them, meaning a negative acceleration, X-rays are generated there. Molybdenum has in its characteristic spectrum the K-alpha line at 17.44 kiloelectron volts and the less intense K-beta line at 19.65 kiloelectron volts. These two characteristic lines are used here for the measurement. The photons of the X-ray radiation hit the crystal rotated by the angle theta with a wavelength between 10 to the power of minus 8 and 10 to the power of minus 12 meters and are also reflected by the angle theta. According to the principle, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, the X-ray detector is rotated by the angle 2 times theta and the resulting energy spectrum is measured there. The angle range of theta is covered from 0 degrees to 30 degrees in 0 0.1 degree steps with a measurement interval of one second each. The crystal is synchronously rotated around theta and the X-ray counter tube around 2 theta. Then the sodium chloride crystal is replaced by the lithium fluoride crystal and the measurement is repeated. The result is a measurement of the intensity of the X-ray radiation measured as a counting rate as a function of the angle of rotation. When measuring with the sodium chloride crystal, one can clearly see the intensive K-alpha line and the slightly less intensive K-beta line in the first, second and third order. When measuring with the lithium fluoride crystal, the two lines can be seen in the first and second order. The crystal consists of different net planes at which the X-rays are reflected. It is now interesting to observe the interference of two parallel rays which are reflected at adjacent planes. If the rays are incident at the angle alpha, the path difference for two rays reflected from adjacent planes at the lattice spacing d is 2d times sinus alpha. To obtain constructive interference, the path difference must be an integer multiple n of the wavelength lambda. This is described by the Bragg condition. 2d times sinus alpha is equal to n times lambda. We measure the reflection of the two lines at the following angles or wavelengths resulting from the Bragg condition. For the sodium chloride crystal with a lattice plane spacing of D is equal to 282 picometers, we obtain for the angle theta is equal to 6.4 degrees. Sinus theta is 0.11. This is the K-beta line in the first order. N times lambda now gives 62.8 picometers and lambda therefore 62.8 picometers. If the angle theta is 12.9 degrees, sinus theta is 0.22, and this is the k-beta line in the second order. Here, n times lambda gives 125.9 picometers, and lambda therefore 62.9 picometers. For the angle theta is 19.6 degrees, sinus theta gives 0.34, and the k-beta line of the third order now gives n times lambda is 198.1 picometers, which results in lambda being 63.0 picometers. This gives us the average for the k-beta line for the wavelength of the k-beta line at 62.9 picometers. For the same crystal, we now look at the k-alpha line. At the angle theta, 7.2 degrees, we have sinus theta 0.13 and now the first order for the k-alpha line 
gives n times lambda a 70.7 picometers. This is also lambda at 70.7 picometers. For theta is equal to 12.9 degrees, we have sinus theta is 0.22. And now the K alpha line in the second order shows us that n times lambda is 142.1 picometers and lambda therefore 71.0 picometers. For theta is 19.6 degrees, we have sinus theta is 0.34. The K-alpha line in the third order gives n times lambda is 213.0 picometers and lambda 71.0 picometers. The average value for the wavelength is now 70.9 picometers. For the lithium fluoride crystal with a lattice plane distance of d is equal to 201 picometers, the following results are obtained. For the angle theta is 8.9 degrees, we have sinus theta is 0.15. The k beta line of the first order gives us n times lambda is 62.2 picometers, which is also the wavelength itself. For theta is equal to 18.1 degrees, we have sinus theta is 0.31. And the k-beta line in the second order gives us n times lambda is 124.8 picometers, which results in lambda being 62.4 picometers. The average is now 62.3 picometers. For theta is equal to 10.2 degrees, we have sinus theta is 0.18. And now the k-alpha line of the first order gives us n times lambda is 71.2 picometers, which is also the wavelength. At theta is 20.5 degrees, we have sinus theta 0.35 and the k alpha line in the second order gives us n times lambda is 140.7 picometers. This results in a wavelength of 70.4 picometers. And this gives us the average wavelength for the k alpha line at 70.8 picometers. In the measurements with the two crystals, we obtain values for the respective wavelength of the x-rays for the two lines which according to E is equal to H times nu is equal to C divided by lambda, corresponds quite well with the literature values, where lambda for K alpha 71.08 picometers and lambda for K beta is 63.09 picometers. This experiment shows the wave nature of X-ray radiation, high energy electromagnetic radiation, and confirms Bragg's law of reflection.